Hey guys, welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. What's up everyone? In today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about cognitive biases in decision making. And I will share with you 15 of the most common cognitive biases and how to take steps to become more self-aware. Now let's jump right into it. All right, guys, before we get into the 15 most important cognitive biases, let's pause for a second and take a look at what a cognitive bias really is. A cognitive bias is a systematic error in thinking that affects the decisions and judgments that people make. Some of these biases are related to memory. The way you remember an event may be biased for a number of reasons, and that in turn can lead to biased thinking and decision making. Other cognitive biases may be related to problems with attention. When you're making judgments and decisions about the world around you, you like to think that you're objective, logical, and capable of taking in and evaluating all the information that is available to you. Unfortunately, these biases sometimes sabotage us, leading to poor decisions and bad judgments. Let's explore the 15 most common cognitive biases and what you can do about them to become more self-aware. Stay by the end of this episode to learn how to download your free Cognitive Biases Cheat Sheet. Now let's get into Cognitive Bias number one. Limiting Generalizations Limiting generalizations, also known as universal quantifiers, are all about exaggeration and lack of flexibility. Let me give you an example of limiting generalizations and how to spot them next time you observe your thinking mind. Nobody. Never. Always. Everyone. Limiting generalizations are very easy to spot and they have few similarities to cognitive bias number two, labeling. Labeling is an extreme form of overgeneralizing. Instead of describing an error in the context of a specific situation, a person will attach an unhealthy universal label to themselves or other people. Here are a few examples of labeling. I am a complete failure. My house is a mess. He is an absolute jerk. Now, let's get into cognitive bias number three, mental filtering. Mental filtering is a cognitive bias where we tend to filter things out of our conscious awareness. We choose, for instance, to focus on the negative events rather than on the positive outcomes of a situation. In that case, we choose to focus on what's not working rather than on what's working. People who struggle with mental filtering often struggle with loneliness, anxiety. Some of them have panic attacks or depression. Focusing on the negative aspects of your life is a self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning that the more you focus on the negative, the harder it will be to get out of the spiral of negative thinking. Cognitive bias number four is polarized thinking, also known as black and white thinking. Polarized thinking is a cognitive distortion where we see things as either black or white, good or bad. We don't see the nuances that exist between one extreme and another. People with this type of distortion feel comfortable placing reality between two extremes. Here's a simple way to spot them in action. Watch out for either or, neither nor type of sentences. Cognitive bias number five is the self-serving bias. The self-serving bias is all about attributing positive events to your own character, but attributing negative events to external factors. It's a common type of cognitive bias that has been extensively studied in social psychology. Here are a few examples of the self-serving bias. I got a good grade because I studied hard. I got a bad grade because the teacher hated me. Now, let's get into cognitive bias number six, personalization. Personalization is a cognitive distortion where we consistently take the blame for absolutely everything that goes wrong with our life. Whenever anything doesn't work out as expected, we immediately take the blame. In some cases, an extreme form of personalization can be a symptom of narcissism. Here are some examples of personalization. My boyfriend left because I'm not good enough for him. My cat died because I deserve to suffer, etc. The next cognitive bias, which is actually number seven, is mind reading. Mind reading is pretty self-explanatory. It's all about assuming that you know what other people think and jumping to conclusions without having enough evidence to support them. Here are a few examples of mind reading. These people are laughing because they're mocking me. 
I know you don't want me to come with you tonight. My boss hates me. Now let's get into cognitive bias number 8. Emotional reasoning. Emotional reasoning refers to the use of subjective emotions rather than objective evidence to form conclusions about yourself and the world. It's very common amongst people who struggle with anxiety. For example, I feel useless, therefore I'm useless. I feel ugly, so that means I'm ugly. I feel guilty, which means I have done something bad. Or I feel anxious, so that means something bad is going to happen. I struggle with this one the most. I tend to get overwhelmed by my emotions sometimes and misinterpret events, especially when I feel anxious. The next cognitive bias is number 9, the Dunning-Kruger effect. Discovered by psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias in which people who are incompetent at something are unable to recognize their own incompetence. People suffering from such a cognitive bias overestimate their skills or talents. In other words, incompetent people have no idea how incompetent or unskilled they really are. The more a person learns about a topic or subject, the more they realize how large the gaps in their knowledge are and how complicated the subject really is. This realization leads to a decline in a person's confidence in their own skills. Cognitive bias number 10 is the confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a type of cognitive bias that involves favoring information that confirms your previously existing beliefs or biases. In other words, we like to find information that confirms our existing beliefs. For example, people generally prefer to spend more time looking at information which supports their political stance, while neglecting information that contradicts it. Now, what is confirmation bias number 11? Loss aversion, also known as the sunk cost fallacy. Loss aversion refers to people's tendency to prefer avoiding losses to acquiring equivalent gains. Here is an example of loss aversion. It is better to not lose $5 than to find $5. The loss aversion is a reflection of a general bias in human psychology, the status quo bias. Now, what exactly is status quo bias, which is actually number 12 in our list? The status quo bias is an emotional preference for the current situation. The status quo bias can cause individuals to make seemingly non-rational decisions to stay where they are right now. To a large extent, it's due to our inability to accept change. Our minds love what's familiar and tend to stay away from what's unfamiliar in order to protect us. Cognitive bias number 13 is in-group favoritism. In-group favoritism, also known as in-group bias, is favoring members in one's in-group over outgroup members. You might think that you are unbiased, impartial, and fair, but it's really easy to fall for this one. Cognitive bias number 14 is the ostrich effect. It's all about choosing to ignore dangerous or negative information by burying your head in the sand like an ostrich. Here are examples of the ostrich effect in action. When you refuse to go to the doctor, although you have serious symptoms that have been persisting for months, Or, as an investor, you choose to check the value of your holdings less often during bad markets. And my personal favorite is number 15. Blind spot bias. Failing to recognize your own cognitive biases is a bias itself. It's much easier to notice cognitive biases in other people than in ourselves. A good example of this is that after listening to this podcast episode, You thought of your partner, a family member, a friend, or a colleague that has some of these cognitive biases, but you fail to recognize them in yourself. Why does that happen? Because we all have blind spots. That's why self-awareness is so important. The more you recognize your blind spots and cognitive biases, the better you will know and understand yourself. If you haven't watched my video on how to become more self-aware, I will link it below. And before you click off this episode, I want you to visit bit.ly slash 15 biases and download the entire list of cognitive biases for free. That's right, guys, all of them in one place at no cost to you. This is my gift to you for all the love and support throughout these past two years. I'm really grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. Now, I want to hear from you. Which one of these cognitive biases do you struggle with the most? Share in the comments below. 
As for me, emotional reasoning is my biggest challenge, and I work on becoming more aware of it every single day. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. Don't forget to download your free cheat sheet by visiting bit.ly slash 15 biases. And I will talk to you in the next one. I love you guys. Bye.